What you just watched is the trailer of A Cold Summer Night. Originally, it's called The Coco Night, a 35 minutes film, which is a pretty difficult format for a lot of film festivals. So that's why、um, I decided to re edit it and make it into a short film. Night. It's very well received in Chinese community.、Um, in the premiere, after the screening, a lot of、uh, audience come up and ask me if the film have a sequel, and someone even tell me they they're interested in investing, you know, for the the making of the sequels. And a lot of Chinese elders talk to me. They say、uh, the film did reflect the reality. And it's very close to life. 吵什么呀你？你吵什么呀？小声点嘛！去跟你儿子说啊，两个多月啊，他没给家用，你知不知道？你不知道啊？劝劝你妈！我不要你劝，要你劝，为什么你上回打麻将去上星星，你忘了？你我说你钱啊，要你管啊！哎，你你你你不要多说，不要多说。哎。A few years ago, I was approached by Sino Quebec Chinese Service Center, and they want to make a film about elder abuse, and we spent months to. Do all the research, and we build our story based on actual cases. Real life, it's more dramatic than what we show in the film. In the story, in the true events, the elders actually was throwing out in, onto the street in the winter, in the snow, and because we have to shot the film during the summer, so that's why the film is called a cold summer night. From a non-Chinese perspective, this film seems very severe. It's not something that you would typically see in a Caucasian household, simply because, at least in North America, my experience has been that parents don't live with their children、uh, for the most part, and when they do, it's usually for a short period of time, towards the end of their lives, when the children are really helping someone that can't help themselves. So it's very, very different.、Um, in looking at this, I know each small piece makes sense. And and when you put it all together with that kind of pressure of having a parent in your home, twenty four seven, three sixty five, I can certainly understand how, over time, it would it would grate and grate and and degrade that relationship to the point that abuse would happen. After the screening of the film in our community, an old lady approached me. She was quite emotional, and she even called me many times afterward. 
And she said to me, how come someone at your age can understand elders that much? And I can definitely see there's a gap between a young and older generation. Talking about two generations living together, uh, there will be inve inevitably some problems because uh, because of the generation gap, they don't think alike. They have different lifestyles. Take China for example. Well, it, it used to be the case that uh, the Chinese like big families. The bigger, the, the better. You know. You have the children there, you have the third generation, the grandchildren. You even have extended families there. But even that is changing in China because people like to have uh, their own life, to keep their life to themselves, their own, their privacy. So take my own case, for example. I have two children, but I live alone. Uh, I see them whenever I want to, and they come to see me whenever they want to. So we each keep our own lifestyle and our own space, our own time. So we avoid all the conflicts. Uh, we avoid any kind of conflicts, not just, say, emotional conflicts, financial conflicts, and the, even the very specific mundane things in life. We can avoid all that. So, talking about abuse in the family, when you're too close, when you don't give each other the space and the time, the breathing space, the conflicts will arise. And sooner or later, well, abuse follows. You know, in our Chinese mentality, parents stay with their children until they die. For some family, it works perfect. You know, the parent and children taking care of each other and they share responsibility. Elders stay home, take care of grandchildren, do some housework so their children can make more money and spend more time at work and make a better living. But as time goes by, this way of living is often challenged by the modern society, especially Montreal, which is a society emphasized individualism. And many couples find it very difficult to live with their parents, the parents-in-law, and elders find their children as not respectful. And the conflict slowly accumulate, accumulated, and it hurts their love. And you know, often we, when we're too close to each other, we become blind. This story talking about is really like our Chinese problem. Like we have our cultural, most of parents they're thinking we have a kids, we want, we want to have a kids and kids supposed to suppose us in future, like take care of forever. I saw some case even worse. I have some friends, um, they living with both of the parents, like husband's parents here, uh, wife's parents here, they living in the same uh, house and they have so many uh, arguments and like a zoo, you know, they're living like a zoo. Some comments from the audience is, what, the film is finished? What is next? What happened to the mother-in-law? What happened to the, the daughter-in-law? And they, they feel the story have no end. And I just want to say that this, I chose um, a realism drama for this film because I just want to show what is real life. And I'm not here to tell people what to think, how to think. I, want, I just simply want to show them and let them to find their own solution. the Coco Night, I never thought that I would make a film about Chinese new immigrants because I believe it's gonna be hard to find a good Chinese actor within a, such a small community until Sano Quebec they approach me and I discover lots of very talented actors doing the auditions. Um, except Nancy, 
who played the role of daughter-in-law. All the other actors, they are all first-time actors. My main actress, Zimei, and she's actually it's a writer, and she's very cultivated, very intelligent. I was the first-time actor、uh, in the cold, cold night. As I recall, when I walked in for the first audition, the director Hu Zhimin asked me,、um, "Have you、uh, uh, any acting experience before?" And I said, "No." And then she said,、um, mm, uh, "Have you ever been abused by anybody, say your daughter or daughter-in-law?" I said, "No." And then she asked a third question. She said, "Do you know anybody who has been abused?" I said, "No." And then I looked at her, and the look on her face, I sort of had the feeling that she was asking herself, "What on earth is this woman here for?" Anyway, so、uh, I came in without any expectations, and I left the place without any either. But to my surprise,、uh, Junin called me. Uh, a few days later, and asked me for a second audition. I just knew she can play this role. And in fact, some people,、um, my crew, they comments that is they could not believe that I chose Zimei. They say she should be the last one on the list. It's impossible. They could not believe my choice. It comes out perfect. It's same as Nancy. It was really hard to find someone to play the daughter-in-law that role. And I met Nancy in other short film productions, and she come to、uh, she come to the auditions, and I observe her, and I, I'm quite impressed by her. And so when I'm writing the script, I already have her in mind. So、um, once again, the choice was right. Hello, ah, Wu Tai. You wait a minute. 能不能回你房间去啊？别老是偷听人家打电话。And to achieve the fighting scene as real as possible,、um, I purposely cast a man who has exactly different, opposite、um, personality and temperament to Nancy. And I didn't rehearse. I didn't want them to rehearse the whole fighting scene, you know, that much. I even I say no, no rehearse, and I just let them, you know, spend some time together because I knew the more time they spend together, the better fighting we can see. The whole acting was challenging for me. But the most challenging part was the part that I was asked to really cry and cry bitterly because I was abused. So, what should I do? And Jimmy said to me, "Think of something very sad in your life." So, I thought of、uh, my mother.、Uh, she had passed away while I was in Canada, and I was not able. To go back for the funeral, so I really, I really cried bitterly over this, and、uh, I cried so bitterly that I,、uh, I couldn't even stop when she said cut. <laughs> anyway, so after that, she, she held me in her arms while tears were still rolling down my cheeks, and she said, "You did a great job," and that brought a smile to my face. I love to work with actors, and I love actors, and I respect actors. Working with first-time actors, elders, and young children—it's not easy. But over the years, I developed my bag of tricks. For example, in this film,、um, I rehearse them, but not too much. I make them into a, like a family, but I still purpose, purposely I keep some distance between. Themselves, so I can keep the freshness. I will not lose the magic moments, and I'm pretty happy、um, for the directing I do in this film. 
And I also want to thank them to give me that trust. My experience was so wonderful working with this director, and she's amazing. Um, she gave me a lot of space, like to to show myself and always discuss. We are like, like I said, we are like family, not like mm, you are director. You have to listen to me. I'm the boss, you know. It is really good. I love it. I hope I can have another chance to work with her. This was my first acting experience in working with Jimin. I felt that the. And Jimin was a very uh, patient, she was a very patient director. And then she, uh, she has her ways uh, of uh, guiding me into the role and make me feel at ease. So, uh, and, and, and she, she has this very special way of making me actually living the role and not acting. So I try to do it in uh, as natural as I could, and uh, and I also find that uh, uh, she's uh, she's actually very good coaching uh, untrained actors. So we had a few of them in the film. The most difficult thing with this film is that we were working with a very small, tight-knit crew, but. The number of locations was large. We had shots all around the city of Montreal. We were in a house, we were with vehicles, we had people running on streets. We had equipment on the side of our vehicles for doing that. Getting all of this done in a very short amount of time and getting it done well um, really required a lot of concentration. Again, what I was saved by is the fact that Zemin is so organized and had it all set up so that I knew what she wanted and we didn't have to do 12 takes for every scene. interest in stories about humanity, culture, and psychologists. Many artists have different ways of seeing art. My way of seeing art is a mission to make a better society to benefit humanity. My biggest inference is by the liter literature of Hugo's Les Miserables. And I read it when I was 12 years old, it touched me profoundly. And I can see the power of humanity. It does change me a lot. The way I see people, the way I see the world. It hurts me to see your anger, Dad, but I'm not your punching bag. I'm, I'm not, not perfect, perfect and, and I'm flawed, flawed just because I'm not a son. You kill our love with your fists, along with my respect and my dignity. My sanity and my self-esteem are buried under toxic shame. You said that's the way of love. You said that's because you cared about me. How many days and how many nights I have been trapped in a big black box. Can you hear my weeping and my prayers? Can you see tracks of my tears? Anger burns me deep inside. It strikes me hard in the empty nights. I'm trapped in the darkness, a black hole. Cannot fight against the gravity. Dad, I need to tell you all 
how I grew up, what I've been through, fear and pain through the years, time to release, to redeem, because I still hope for peace. I believe that our subconscious is the most honest and reliable source of ins inspirations and reality. Uh, as an experimental filmmaker myself, I can tell you that. If you are able to decode my film, I feel I'm naked in front of you. Sometimes it's pretty frightening. And I like to combine realism and surrealism, these two drama together. And at the same time, I love to develop more experimental way of, of storytelling, both visually and in the structure of the story. When I was teenage, I started to write plays and direct them twice a year in school. Later, I fell in love with photography. But only after I moved to Montreal, I discovered what is my passion, what is my future career. And I spent three years in studying film production in Concordia University. In order to become a good director, um, I work as director of photos so I can understand how to tell a story visually. And I also develop myself into an editor. So I learn to how to tell a story, how to construct a story with a good pace. Fred, merci d'avoir aimé. Carole. Fred, est-ce que tu m'aimes? Est-ce que tu m'aimes? I've been, I have been traveling a bit of the world and I took a lot of photos. And I came to realize that it was not my eyes who see the pictures, it was my heart. Art forms are tours. A good story has to be told by a filmmaker's heart.
Cinema is a combination of seven arts, but I believe that as time goes by, it will include more other art forms. For example, some visual art, art of technology. To be a good filmmaker, it's very ambitious, very challenging, very demanding. It requires constant study, learning, and to be cultivated, to be open-minded, and to be healthy. Right now, I'm the mother of two young children, and a lot of people seeing that.、Um, It slows down my career, and it might even end my career. But I have to tell you that having these two creatures was the best thing. Was the best thing happened in my life. It made me a better person and a better filmmaker.、Um, I have more patience, and I understand people much better. I see and think differently, and I have more love and peace with myself. And I think I'm actually,、um, in many ways, healthier than before.、Uh, and I, most important, I do learn a lot of responsibility. The audience reaction of the coconut shows me that there are stories from our Chinese community need to be told, and there are audience are craving for this kind of film. It really encouraged me to continue work in this direction, and because of this film, I became very interested in elders' life and their stories. So I keep doing my research and develop new scripts. And hopefully, in the future, I can bring this story to life.、Um, my wish, I wish, I find a producer that、uh, had the same passion as me, who have the same interest in this kind of stories, and who love to work with me. I have been a producer, writer, director for most of my film, and it's about time to extend my team. Um, I believe that、um, the distance between a loser and a winner is that small. The difference is the lo loser、um, we give up before they arrive there, and the winner is the one he constantly working hard to reach his dream, who believe in himself. Who follow his passion, follow his heart. So, if you have a dream, stick on it. You will be there one day. <laughs>